What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you part two of our Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire story series. In our last episode, we successfully got our ship fixed and were able to leave the island of Port Maje. And we were headed towards Nekataka. Now I do want to mention, while we are headed to Nekataka for the sake of the story, you aren't actually required to go there. The game actually gets pretty open world at this point, and you are able to go wherever you please, provided, you know, you have the skills to get by. Again, following the critical path here, we're going to go ahead and head to Nekataka. So Nekataka is the main capital of the Deadfire Archipelago that is just north a bit of Port Maje. Upon arrival, we will be confronted by the Harbor Master, who will basically have questions about why we're there. And when we try to explain that we are the Herald of Barath and we need to speak to the Queen, we basically get laughed at until Barath herself steps in and kind of forces you to scare the entire dock with ghosts. Which, of course, both proves you are a watcher to most of the city who's going to be hearing about this, as well as scaring the harbor master off and leaving you to your own devices. Now, at this point, we can explore the city if we want. It is comprised of about five different maps that you can travel in between. You can encounter random encounters while you travel in between them. We are headed for the topmost of these districts called Serpent's Crown, where the Kahanga Palace is. Now once we arrive at the Kahanga Palace, we of course go inside and we kind of sort of interrupt a meeting between the Queen and two factions that we'll be interacting with. Rawatai, the Royal Deadfire Company that is, and the Valen Trading Company from Old Vela. Now upon your entry, the Queen will actually speak telepathically to you, somehow knows you're a watcher already, and basically gives you the floor because she's aware you're a watcher and is aware that you probably have some sort of news about the giant stomping through the land, which is what these two are here to complain about. So while you explain that you actually know what this titan is up to, you will find out that in addition to Port Maje suffering the effects of Aeothis stomping through the land, a Rawatai fort known as Hasango has also been kind of uh, destroyed, basically. What will happen here is that ultimately the queen will tell you that she's going to send you to Hasango to find out what happened, which should appease these two, as well as fulfill your personal goal of tracking Aeothis down, because there is an Adra lighthouse there, which we should be able to commune with to again speak with Aeothis like we did at the Ngwithin dig site just a bit ago. Now this is the part where we are going to pick up the rest of the actual companions. We get a, another companion for each of the factions that we have left. So, and keep in mind, you can of course turn these down. You don't have to take these people with you. But the Royal Deadfire Company will give you the services of Maya, who is the sister of Kana from the first game. The Valen Trading Company will give you the services of Palagina, who was also a companion from the first game. And then the Huana, that is to say Queen Onikaza and her tribe, will direct you to go pick up a water shaper known as Takehu, who is a water godlike, as well as a druid. Now, I do want to mention real quick, because this is where it makes the most sense to do so, while that wraps up all of the actual companions, you can find several more characters that are known as sidekicks from here. Sidekicks are recruitable people who have a unique experience and story and they are usually a tied to one very specific quest for each of them, as opposed to having a line of quests and dialogue and stuff that the actual companions do. Think of them as a tier slightly in between full-blown companion and randomly recruited adventurer through an inn. Now, while we have our quest to go to Hasango to continue tracking down Aeothis, chances are, at this point in the game, you will more than likely not be able to head straight there. This is normally where you would do side quests. But because we are following the main path, we are going to basically go straight to Hasango. However, I do want to mention that this is normally where you would start interacting with the factions, which is to say the Huana, which is Queen Onikaza and her stuff, the Royal Deadfire Company, the Valen Trading Company, as well as the Principi. This is important because those are factions that we can use for a part of the story later. You can side with them, shall we say. However, we're not going to jump into that right now. We're going to discuss all of that in detail when we actually get to that point in the story. For right now, all we need to technically do is go to Hisongo and see what happened there. So, using the magic of YouTube, we're jumping forward to Hisongo. Now, when we arrive, we obviously notice that the fort is destroyed, but we pretty much knew that was the case before we ever showed up. 
In a building nearby, we can talk to some survivors who will explain what happened. After Aeothis came through and the Royal Deadfire Company tried to fight him and failed and were ultimately killed, most of them anyway, after that happened, the Naga came, for whatever reason, mopped up as many of the survivors as they could find, as well as took over the lighthouse that we need to get to. Now from here, what we're trying to do is simply get across this map to the Audra lighthouse. There is some stuff you can do in between, and the most important thing is find the spirit of a dead Naga nearby. So that's, I mean, you don't have to do it, but that's probably the only thing of note worth mentioning in this particular walkthrough. So from there, once we actually get to the Audra lighthouse, we can confront the Naga leader, Sagan, or Sugan, maybe. This is important because we don't have to kill him. If we interacted with the soul, the Naga soul earlier that I just mentioned, and then we go talk to Sagan, we can actually convince him to not fight us and just let us commune with the Adra because he explains that his people are here trying to fix the Adra. Because when Aeothis came through, he sucked all the souls out of it and it seemingly turned off, which is a problem because of course souls pass through Adra pillars. If you say that you're a watcher and you're here to help, he'll ask you to prove it and you can pull forth that Naga soul that we met earlier and basically prove to Sagan that we're not here to fight the guy. Or alternatively, you can just kill all of them as you know, is your want. But you don't have to, I guess is my point. Now, when we commune with the Adra Pillar and thus commune with Aeothis again as he's walking through the oceans, we get a bit more information, and that is to say that what is happening as he's passing through places is he's tethering himself to luminous Adra Pillars and pulling the souls out of them. As long as he does that, he doesn't need to pull souls from creatures around him. The reason you died when he first came to was he pulled the souls from people around him, which kills them, of course, because, you know, he's pulling their souls out. And he uses that to power the Titan to get where he's going. But if he attaches himself to Luminous Audra Pillars, he doesn't need to do that. He can just take the souls of people who are already dead. Either way, though, still not a great option. Well, he explains that he doesn't really have time to talk right now, because otherwise the tether will snap and he'll be forced to kill more living people to keep going. If you meet him at a place he calls the Ashen Maw, he can speak to you again. And there, he says he'll explain his purpose. Now, after this... We can speak to the Naga leader Sugan again, and again, make the choice to kill him or not, or let him go. If we let him go, he says he's going to go tell his people about this very strange interaction he had with humans, or just people in general, really. And once we leave, Hasanga will be immediately confronted by the Royal Deadfire Company and their main head guy, Atsura. Atsura will basically thank you for freeing Hasango from the Naga and direct you back to the palace. Now it's worth noting that technically the next step in this is actually not necessary to go straight back to the palace. You can just head straight for the Ashen Maw if you're high enough level. But again, you likely won't be because this is where doing more side quests would normally come in. For the sake of this video, we are going to go ahead and head back to the palace in Serpent's Crown in Nekataka and we're going to go speak with Queen Onikaza II again. But on our way there, we'll be stopped by the gods for a second time, just like when we left Port Maje. This time, the gods will basically do the exact same thing they did the first time. They'll debate at attacking Aeothis outright, decide that they're going to wait to see what he's actually up to first. You tell the gods that he is headed towards the Ashen Maw in Magrin's Teeth, which is a volcanic mountain range to the north of the Deadfire Archipelago. They decide not to do anything just yet, but then ultimately tell you to follow him and see what he's up to. So our next goal, as they put it, is to go to the Ashen Maw. But like I said, we're going to go speak to Onikaza first. And once we get there, she can give us a little more information about Magrin's Teeth, which is the mountain range, as well as the Ashen Maw. It is home to a race that Magrin made, known as the Rathun, which are giant fire godlike. And she suspects that even if they don't manage to kill Aeothis, Aeothis will kill them, thus ridding her of another enemy. And then she gives us a side quest to go speak to her Water Shapers Guild in the city of Nekataka, because she hasn't heard from their leader recently. That is where we are going to wrap up part two. So in this particular part, which wasn't particularly long, but nonetheless, 
We arrived in Nekataka, spoke to the main factions of the game, who sent us, the Watcher, on a mission to Hasango to find out what happened to it. We discovered that Naga were trying to reactivate the Audra Pillar there after Aosis came through and destroyed the place. We reactivate the Audra Pillar and dealt with the Naga however we so chose. And then we found out that Aosis was pulling souls from these people, which we kind of already knew, and that he's headed towards the Ashen Maw, which is our next objective. With that out of the way, the next act will also be a little short, but then after that, the last episode should be very long. A little bit of a spoiler here, more so than this part was designed to tell you anyway, is that after the interaction in the Ashen Maw, you can choose to side with factions or you can choose to go it alone. I'm going to try to cover all of that for the sake of covering the story in the last part where all of it is the most relevant. So the second and the third part here will be a little short, but then the fourth part and fourth and final part, much like the first part, should actually be fairly long. So with that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. The channel is doing incredibly well. Obviously, I couldn't do that without you guys watching this stuff. So just honestly, thank you so much. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.